Welcome back. Episode six of Black Women in Business, The Dirty Truth. So today's episode is a good one. It is one that I'm even excited to hear some breakdown stuff um, because it is one up until like the last this year, really, I've had to work on for myself. And I know when you ladies and gentlemen that are listening hear this today, you either going to be like super anxious or feel a sense of relief and be ready to switch some things up or you about to just tune us out because <laughs> this is a big one. So we're going to talk about money relationships, whether you have a good one or a bad one. We all have a relationship with money. Money is there. It's like I'm getting my degree. Our professor literally gave a whole day's talk on money being like politics and the conversations. It was part of like our final exam about <laughs> running businesses and do you include family with money? Like I never thought it was that deep, but money is truly deeper than just this. The jokes that we make on the side or the jokes that we have about family, it's deep. And I know for me, I had a negative relationship, but a lot of it was mindset. And so that's where we're going to start. Dana introduced us to our money archetypes. And I really, I love that. If you're in the business world in any shape or form, you know, there is literally like a test <laughs> for everything, like your color, your attitude, your mood. If five o'clock is the time for you to get up in the morning and work, like there is something it's, it's, it's great. I really love that you can find out little pieces about yourself because then you know what works best for you. And Dana has some amazing knowledge on a lot of these topics. Ladies, we need to do an episode on being a lady in our time of the month and working because that was everything when Dana did it. That's a whole other day. But we're going to let Dana get your mind right for this episode this evening, because I think that if you're sitting, if you have a negative relationship, you could be sitting in a place of not just not understanding, a lack of understanding for yourself. And this will help. We will drop the link in the comments where you can go and take this test little quizzy. It's not hard. It's super easy, but we'll drop it so you can take it and it'll help you. I hope, pray that it helps you move forward into a more harmonious relationship with money. So let's yes. get to these money archetypes. Yes, 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 yes. And so I have to first actually credit. So I did take like a whole series course with this um, with my dear friend, Sarah. So I'm going to actually tag her as well. And when you take the test, I'm going to put, it, it'll be the link to her test. So it'll take you to her website. Um, so you can get a lot more in depth than what we're going to kind of briefly um, go over in this one. But when I tell you like, so there's certain things that I think that are, um, am I a spender or am I a saver, right? Did my parents teach me a healthy, you know, relationship with money or did they teach me an unhealthy one? Like those key boxes are important to first and foremost understand. But what we're going to talk about is we're going to get even more specific and in detail. And the reason that we're going to do that is because even though I know for me, I am not a spender, I am a saver. Um, but the way I make money is different than the way my husband makes money, right? So when we have conversations and I have this entrepreneurship mindset and I'm like, you know, a nine to five job actually makes it more difficult in my life to make money. He can't understand it, but it's because our archetypes are so different. Okay. So when you take the test, a lot of it will make sense, but I want to first and foremost, start with my archetypes. Okay. So my archetypes there, there is a total of eight archetypes that you'll fall under and you'll have a dominant three that you, you tend to uh, gravitate with. And what you'll find is as you read through these archetypes, there's going to be some things you're like, oh my goodness, that's dead on spot on me. Right. And then there's going to be some things you're like, oh, that's not really me. Or you're going to find with certain scenarios this archetype comes into play, where in other scenarios, this archetype comes into play. Um, and so I found that in my business. And when I got grabbed hold of this, it really, really helped me to make uh, better changes. So I want to actually start with the alchemist. And I want to start with the alchemist because I thought it was interesting because all three of us, this is the only one that all three of us had in common. Um, and when we talk about the alchemist, like, so one of the things, and 
If this is you, light uh, up with the hearts. You're like, yes, girl, yes, that's me. Do it in the comments. Let us know. But so for the alchemists, what's super interesting is they usually have a love-hate relationship with money. Okay? They understand and appreciate, like, the power, what it does, what you need to do with it, and all of the things, right? And when they have it, they have those strengths of, like, it's transformational. They're willing to be daring with it. They have all these ideas around what to do with it, okay? But here's their challenges, okay? Relying on others for financial support. That's hard for alchemists. Um, feeling judgmental about money. Let me know because I think this is one that plagues a lot of women, right? They're like, oh my goodness, I'm making good money. I'm doing this. But then they don't want to be too showy about it, right? I'm guilty of this. There were times where I don't post myself on vacations because I feel guilty that I can't afford to do these things, right? Um, there's times where I'm like, I know our car or certain things that we're able to do because of the sacrifices that we made. And I don't want to feel showy or people to judge me because this is what we choose to do with our money. Um, another one that I think is super, super important is discounting or rebelling against creating money goals and habits. Who don't want to write it down? <laughs> like, I don't want to write it down. So um, this was a few weeks back, but we did a course um, with one of our mentors, Leona. And she asked the question, like, how is your month going? And what does it look like? And I was like, mm, I don't look at it. My husband look at it. <laughs> I know that this is my goals, but sometimes I'm like, I just don't want to look at it, right? So again, if you can relate to that as an alchemist, let us know, let us know, let us know in the comments. I don't know, ladies, did you guys have anything else that you wanted to like elaborate on that like you see in yourselves or things that you've had to overcome um, even from that perspective as the alchemist? For me, this is like, Huge. This was one of the ones that was hugely spot on. So like Dana mentions the top three. So my two were even 27. And reading this one was the one that I was like, yeah, this me, because there's a part that is like, you want to, you love people, you want to be of service to people, but you have an issue with monetizing the things that you do. And that's me. Like, I am like 100% like, let's do this. And then when somebody will come to me and be like, why don't you sell it? I'm like, mm. And outwardly, it just seems like I just want to help, right? I just want to help. But inside, it's like, oh, no, I can't do that. Like, if I charge somebody, what's somebody going to say? Like, is it worthy of being charged for? Because And so I can outwardly just make it seem like it's giving. Like, And not to discredit, I love helping other people. But I do realize now, having done the work, there are things that you can charge for and it's okay but that's a that was a huge struggle and the relying on financial support when i made the decision to stop working outside of the home and come in i don't know how many arguments my husband and i had about me being like and it was me like and he's probably going to see this and be like oh lord she didn't say it to my face though but <laughs> i would be like you know and like just this that feeling of you the way you're talking to me is like it's my money and he probably was it's probably no different in his verbiage or anything to when I was making thousands a month outside of the home, right. it just felt like it to me because I felt like now I'm working off of what I saved to quit, to build this empire for myself and for my family. Are you looking at me? Like you ain't making enough. And that was huge. That was something that I had to curb and get rid of. Um, and then writing the stuff down. I have it down now. We finished the three of us uh, a few months back, uh, like a, uh, I don't want to call it a challenge, but we did this work within our businesses and I wrote it in the corner. It is pinned up here on my computer and there is a money amount and that, that's scary. But yeah, Alchemist, I just, whoo, bleed it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Anything for you, Andrea? <clears throat> for me, it was just a love-hate relationship thing um i do have a love-hate relationship with money i love what it's here for i can spend 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 because i'm not a saver I, I don't but um 
when I have it, it's like, yes, I can plan a vacation. I can pay off some things. I can do this and that. But then when my bank account looking a little funny, I'm like, well, um, let me just sit over here in the corner and count these rocks over here because, I mean, what are we going to do this month? And so I hate that I have to go outside of the home to work because I feel like life is so much more than just going to work every day, coming back home, rinse and repeat. And so that's my, I hate this. I don't want to do it. Make it stop because I feel like a hamster in a wheel. And uh, my husband and I are like going back and forth with each other. Well, if you can make this work, if you could, no, I don't want to make it work. It's going to work. And just give me some time. I know, I know what money can do, but I just don't want to talk about it. I love that. I would love, I would be super curious, ladies, what your husband's archetypes are too. Um, and with that, I actually want to go to one that Tamika is, <laughs> and my husband is also, and I, my brain can't even understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the accumulator. So an accumulator, you and money are outwardly a match made in heaven. For you, saving and living within your means comes naturally, but inwardly worrying about spending even small amounts of money, not trusting that money is an unlimited resource or fearing that you'll run out of money can cause you tremendous stress and anxiety, okay? Um, so some of the things when it comes to an accumulator, um, they are trustworthy, they're disciplined, um, saving comes easily for them. They are good at creating financial independence, um, being financially responsible. Um, some of their challenges though are secrecy, lack of trust and generosity, um, obsessiveness or compulsion, feeling guilt or doubt about investing. So I would love, love, love for you to elaborate on this one, Mrs. Tamika. Okay, so I want to start with the, I guess, what you consider the challenges, the negatives, really. Um, it's that first one. So when I saw it like that, I was like, oh, uh, because I'm generous. What in the world? This thing told a lot. But it's not like what you think of like helping. It's that the lack of trusting in being generous for me because as it mentioned in there, you feel like it's not this unlimited thing. Like money's not just like I say, it's not growing on trees. I'll say that in a heartbeat. It's not out there growing on trees. So when you're thinking about, you know, giving money to somebody, supporting somebody in a financial way, it's the lack of trust in whatever situation got them where they at. <laughs> and in the fact that you're like, but can I get this back? So when I, I had to really sit with that and was like, yep, because you know what, I can like, and I'm a super overthinker and I'm trying to recover <laughs> and work with that, but I can talk myself into every scenario because of that lack of trust and, um, and generosity around it. I am obsessive and compulsive when it comes to just the hoarding of money because I always, my husband, I need, he needs to do his cause I need to know what he is. But he'll always say, what are we saving for? And inside, I'm like, outward, I swear I have an answer. But inside, my head is screaming, we don't know. Just, just because. Because you don't know what's going to happen. I need a what if account. <laughs> what if this happens? And so whenever I hear like a motivational speaker or somebody say, have this for this, I immediately send it to him. Or I'll rattle it off to him. Because I'm like, this is why. This is why we're saving because I need for my peace, this anxiety, this stress. I need to know that if you decide to make this investment and it goes belly up, that lack of trust, we're going to be OK. Like I have to have that. And it has um, not anything to do with like childhood things, but it has to do with like seeing things play out in the world uh, around you, like people not having money. And then that feeling of guilt and doubt of investing. This is where I did a lot of work over the last year. So if there are any ladies or fellas watching this that are thinking about starting a business, wanting to run a business, you've got to work through this if you're an accumulator before you expect any kind of success. And I know that sounds really hard, 
But a lot of why I was really sluggish in the beginning of my business was because I was very afraid and felt guilty and taking money from what I thought was from my family to invest in a good website, to purchase a flip kit or to pur purchase something to teach from because I was like, you know, what if it doesn't work? What if I just waste this $500? What if paying this for this, you know, website costs me and doesn't work out? So those are the things that um, you really have to heal. If you're an accumulator, it's great because, you know, you're a saver and you got the money and you're ready for that rainy day. But secretly, if you don't get a grasp on it and like take this test and really understand what that means, business wise, and the secrecy part relationship wise can be really, really freaking hard. You will, you will have humps that you won't realize you're like, why, why? Like I mean, my prayers to God. And then I'm like, you know what? I, you did right by being like, no, nope, I'm not giving you that. Cause you afraid you're afraid to handle this amount of money. And if you're afraid right now, you're not going to make the right decisions to the things that you say you want to do. So if you're an accumulator, it is beautiful. But make sure that you put the work in to understand that guilt feeling around investing and um, heal that piece and, and really understand yourself. Because if not, Lord have mercy, it will it will be a blockade, an internal one that you may never get over. If you don't understand it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so next, I'm going to move over again. This is not one that I have, but... <laughs> This is one that Andriana has, connector. So the connector, your faith and optimism that money will always be available keeps you from feeling much. If any financial stress, yet this same innocent quality that believing you'll always be taken care of can cause you to lack financial independence or blindly trust the handling of financial details to others. Um, so a strength is that you're very trusting, innocent, resilient. Resiliency is important. Your gifts, not overly stressing about money, but faith and optimism, creating valuable relationships. Uh, usually connectors have really, really strong relationships. Um, some of the challenges, lack of financial independence, uh, not feeling empowered with money, and feeling overwhelmed with basic financial details. So I would love if whatever resonates with you doesn't resonate with you, I would love for you to chat a little bit more as a connector. Well, looking at the gifts, I am over, I overly stress about money, but I can't connect with that. But everything else that you said, um, <clears throat> the lack of financial independence, if it's like a big purchase or something like that, I do not want the responsibility of it's just like my husband asking what we're gonna eat for dinner tonight i don't know what you want because i just go along with what you want to do don't put that burden on me i do not want that and it says if you are solely responsible uh for your money management what financial details do you need to know i don't want to know <laughs> i don't want to know anything about it i just let you make the decision because mm -mm. I do not want the responsibility of just making big life changing decisions just because uh, I'm too trusting. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. Um, so next I'm going to jump into, I believe I was the only Maverick, right? Okay. So I'm going to jump into Maverick. This one, I will say um, even my husband jokes, even before this whole, t he would always call me a Maverick. Like he, he like, which is funny that even before I took the test that like this would be one of my key ones. Um, and just by definition, thinking of the word maverick. But um, so for the maverick, and again, if this resonates with you, let us know in the comments if you're like, that's me, that's me. So your creativity when it comes to generating money is amazing. But balance isn't something you often value or find exciting which can lead you into situations of creating extreme financial highs and lows. Okay, so if anybody knows Dana, if anybody, one thing that comments I get all the time <laughs> when people follow me is, you know how to make a dollar. Like you will sell water to a whale. <laughs> like you, you have always been that type of person that like when I had my spa, when I did, like I will make it work, but I only make it work 
when there's a goal or something that I want, right? So that's where I will say those financial highs and those financial lows where my husband, who's an accumulator, gets frustrated because in my head, I'm like, oh, we'll just make it again. If we lose it all, it's cool, right? <laughs> it was like, what? Like his anxiety is like, I cannot, I cannot. Like he has literally said, like, I have to stay in my field because you are the kite and I'm the string. And if I don't like reel you in, like you will literally like gamble all of our money on like, I want a coffee shop and go buy this building. And be like, what are you doing? I actually think I did do that with the spa when I <laughs> started leasing this. Building. My husband might be a maverick. I'm gonna have to have him and I'm gonna let you know. He might be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that would be so funny. Um, so some of the sacred strengths of the maverick, they're clever, they're flamboyant. So Everybody always talk about Dana so extra. <laughs> Charismatic. Um, structuring deals and handling financial um, complexities. We're good at doing those things. Um, paying attention to numbers and financial details. That is not actually a strength of mine. So that's why like some of these you'll find. Like I'm like, no, nah, I don't really care about all that. Um, taking risks. I am, which is crazy because it's like, I wouldn't jump off a building, but like if it's money, I'm like, worst thing is if, if it's gone, it's gone. At least I try it. <laughs> like I'm more willing to throw it at it and see what happens versus not trying at all. Um, so challenges, secrecy or potential deception, gambling with financial security, getting caught in feeling the need to win approval. Okay, so this is a big one, big one, big one. Um, I know for me, like all of that, all of that, all of that, all of that. Um, and sometimes with the approval, it's mainly because like outside sources say, Hey, this is what you need, or this is what you should be doing. Um, where I'm like in my brain, I'm like, yeah, but if like, I will figure out how to make the money. Like I will be creative. I will, I will make it work. So if you're a maverick, let us know, let us know. Um, let's move on to nurture. So I believe both, okay, you were nurture. Okay, so nurturer, your desire to be of service often inspires you to share your financial resources, but what you see as selfless generosity can easily create enabling relationships and problematic boundaries with the people you want to help. Plus, sow seeds of resentment or mar martyrdom, I can't say that word right, within you, okay? So gifts, you're giving, devoted, reliable, uh, or those are sacred strings, sorry. Um, your gifts are generosity, giving amazing value, and loyalty, probably loyalty to a fault. Challenges, feeling the need to rescue, abandonment of self, and feeling resentful or becoming a martyr. Okay, so let's speak on it. Let's speak on it. All of that. So anybody who knows me is probably like, <clears throat> ooh, really? So when you take this, you're going to get this breakdown, right? And so my top was accumulator at 27. Then I was an alchemist at 27. And I'm a nurturer at 26. So all of these really run. And like Dana said, some of them speak to me and other pieces are like, no, that's not me at all. But not a whole lot. Like this is, it's very freaky. So this is probably would be, the piece that does, it's funny it comes after, um, well, it doesn't have to accumulate at the top, but it's funny that it's in there because I think this is what aids, it's like the angel and devil on your shoulder. It's my accumulator and then my nurturer over here. And I think they battle so much because I am. That loyalty to a fall, it's like, I will help. There are people on here who you might see it and yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm not gonna name you, but I'm talking about you where I'm just like, let's just help them help them and you get burned and you get burned and you get burned but i'm also based on my personality type is that it all build up and then it'll be that one time that i'll just explode like a volcano and it all comes out and then people be like yo did that just happen like <laughs> there was tamika that way and um it it, it is so i have a huge <laughs> emotionally internal balance and fight with like wanting to save you know having that lack of trust and fear around and helping people investing and then needing to. I need to help people, but all of that crap, it's, it's a mess. It is such a mess. So if you have these three, 
I'm praying for you. I got, <laughs> I know it's rough because it is, it is like such a, and that's why I said it's really important for you to take this. If you're trying to deal with money in any way, relationship wise, business wise, because understanding all of these things and how you can make them work and how you can stop stressing and freaking out because it does until I knew little things about myself, my personality, and now having this little piece from um, extra piece from Dana is huge because this is this is a constant circle that I go through. Like I want to help people, but I don't trust people because <laughs> people be putting themselves in these positions. But I don't want to give up on you know that money that's in the savings account, and it's just vicious and it goes in a circle. Um, but this is a hundred percent to me. Like I can't even. I can't even say nope, yes, no to none of this. This is me personality wise, like through and through. Um, it's funny. It's amazing to look at, but at the same time, it's like, are you just throwing up all my little weaknesses and my red flags? <laughs> so interestingly, I also am a nurturer. So nurturer is my third. So alchemist, well, maverick, alchemist and nurturer. Um, and it, it's interesting to me how the different parts of you reflect on these other parts of you. So for me, where I get stuck in the nurturer is I, as a maverick, am like anybody can make money at any time, right? So where I start becoming a martyr or I start, I'm like, no, you can do this too. So like, I want to keep helping drag people along like, no, no, no. This is how you can make money. This is how you can do it. And I want to drag them along and nurture them in, even to the point where it's hurting me and it's hurting my business and it starts affecting other things. Um, but it's like my heart is like, I've done it. So I know you can do it too. Look, if I can do it, you can do it for sure. Right. So I feel like that's where my nurturer comes in, that caring that kind of pulling people along and I'm really feeling like I need to rescue them. Like, I feel like I need to save you because I'm like, if you're financially struggling, there's so many ways that you can make money, right? Like I, yeah. And so, so I think that's where my nurturer comes in. It is my lowest one on there, but I've definitely, definitely sacrificed a lot of money, a lot of time in people that they're like not ready or they're not feeling the same energy that I'm like, I can see this in you, but they can't see it in themselves. As red flaggish as it still is, kind of, I like the the merriment of the maverick and the nurturer. I'm really gonna make my husband do it because I think that's him. Because he'll be like, mm -mm, "Cause if this is all you got to do to make this money," but at the same time, he's like, "I can show you to do this piece." But I like them two together. Mine is just like, "I'm gonna save you. Here you go. Here's your pot of gold." <laughs> <laughs> It, it works well together too. Uh, with that, we're going to skip down to ruler. So um, this is another one um, that uh, if this resonates with you, let us know in the comments, let us know. Um, but the ruler, your drive to create makes you an unstoppable passionate force for making a big impact and significant income. For you, money measures your level of achievement and an accomplishment. While outwardly admired for your successes, the danger is in measuring your inner sense of value by your bank balance, okay? So sacred strengths, courageous, visionary, determined, the gifts creating an empire where everyone thrives, um, innovating news and exciting growth opportunities, being decisive and creating value, challenges, not indulging and enjoying life in the moment, always chasing a money, a moving money target, never feeling there's enough money. So Miss Andriana, can you speak on some of these? Cause we know this is one of yours. Yes, yes, yes. Now I am not, um, I don't know. I don't indulge on enjoying life in the moment. I don't know if I agree with that or not, but feeling like there's never enough money. I feel like I can always make something. It's always there. It's always going to be there. And I just need to go get it. But something that just like really spoke to me when Dana said this, it was like, is there a dream you've kept a secret? Oh yeah. Because, or maybe because you fear that you'll look arrogant or be judged as being too big for your bridges. I've been told so many times, oh, you're going to be able to do that. Just no, that's not for you. You can do this instead. And I've been told that 
And I just don't say anything now because, I mean, I have something that I want to say, but mm -mm, nope, I'm just going to keep it to myself because I won't be able to accomplish it. And I've told myself that so much. It's, I've started believing it. And I think that's what's really holding me back from doing what I need to do. But I can, I'm can. i a visionary. I can dream up a dream for you, you, and everybody else that's in the comments because I just want everybody to have money and just be at the top and eat at the table. Nice, nice, nice. I like that. Um, so I do want to, as we mentioned, there was eight archetypes. So I do want to just briefly touch on the celebrity and the romantic, which we didn't talk about, but those might be ones that also resonate with you. So the celebrity, um, your charismatic personality makes you a magnet for attracting five-star people and experiences. You love to bring on the bling, create a lot of attention, and you deeply appreciate the doors that money can open. So sacred strengths, your magnetic, you're confident, radiant. Your gifts is leadership, helping others make a great impression, standing out in a crowd. Challenges, compulsive spending, valuing status above financial security, and spending on appearance to avoid feeling empty or criticized. So this is one that my husband is a celebrity. Um, so it, it, it's always interesting because again, I, when we first started this, this isn't necessarily a reflection of, are you a spender versus a savior? It just means how you operate when it, your thought patterns behind money. So with my husband, um, he is, I will spend on the things that make me, my home, my car look nice, but I'm not going to spend on maybe other things. So the example I use for that is like my husband would love for me to take money and go get my nails done like normal women. Right. And things like that. But for me, in my head, I'm like, I'd rather put that money back into business and make more money. <laughs> right. But he like he will move around the budget. He will move things around because this is his personality. He has a personality that like he sings, he dances, like when he's in a room, like he usually lights it up, right? Like, so that celebrity, like I think is a super interesting one. I would love, love, love to know if you're a celebrity, let us know in the comments, let us know, let us know. Um, romantic. So this is the last one. So you know how to use money to enjoy your life and often spend it because you feel you deserve it or you want to indulge the people you care about, okay? But spending can be a cover-up to avoid feelings of emptiness, an absence of love, or a lack of feeling valued and acknowledged. So sacred strengths are luxuriant, um, abundant, pleasure-seeking, gifts, uh, believing there will always be more, being generous with others, enjoying the things that money can buy, some of the challenges are flamboyant spending, ignoring or avoiding anything to do with finances, spending to mask feeling undeserving, unappreciated, or unloved. Okay. So again, all of the archetypes have their positives, their negatives, but the purpose, and hopefully as we kind of gone through some of these, is to understand where you are and where you might need to put things in place. So I know for me, when it comes to things like, like I said, I'm I'm good at creating the opportunities for money, but then sometimes my nurturer comes in when I need to ask for a sale. And so when I am in that position, I now have things automated. So like if I meet with you for a manifest call, the follow-up email that you get immediately walks you through how to get started with me. So the automation does the work because my money archetype sometimes will kind of, oh, well, maybe they need this or maybe they can't afford it or maybe this or maybe that. So understanding your weaknesses is really where you can input some strengths. I 100 percent like I cannot. This is big. Like if you had talked to me two or three years ago with all of these like colors and um, enneagrams, I'd have been like, child, if you don't go on. But 
it really does help because like Jana said, you, you know, those weaknesses or maybe even trauma or things that were given to us culturally or generationally, this is going to help you heal. Not necessarily the test itself or the answers, but it's the piece that you get to answer or understand why you make the decisions that you make, why you don't make the decisions that you make. Uh, it has helped me tremendously. And this even more so because you know, we went through our top three and we talked about our top three, but the next one for me is ruler at 25. So mine went 27, 27, 26, 25, and then the rest just fell off. So adding all of those pieces in, it just, it's, it's amazing to be able to understand yourself and then be able to move forward in whatever direction you need to go seek the help. You know, if you're in therapy, this would be an amazing thing to be able to take and be like, look, this is what I know about myself now. This is what I've been through, whether it is a cultural thing or, um, you know, because I, being a military spouse, I've seen comments come up and you notice them, you know, spouses reaching out for help. I am a key spouse. So they'll reach out for help and they'll explain to you, you know, I come from Hispanic background. Whereas when you leave a Hispanic household and you go and you get married, your parents is like, don't come to me for nothing. Don't come to me. It's your spouse's job now. And if, you know, your spouse is like, well, I come from a place where family is always going to help you and those things can harbor in you money wise. And if you're starting to try a business or maybe you're looking to make a decision that can hinder you and getting that help, these can help. So it's, it's getting you brick by brick. And I love it, love it, love it. So grab that link out of the comments, take the test. We would love for you to come back after you've done it. And talk to us some more about your types. Uh, maybe this is something that we could come back and do another one later with the people that have taken it and just go more into deep in detail because this is such an in-depth thing and learning about yourself is, it's, it's so freeing and healing, but it takes a lot. So take that, <laughs> take that test. We would love for you to come back and tell us what your top three are. Um, and even your score, your markers, so we can see how high or how low you are on those three. We would love to hear your ideas. What are your relationship right now as it stands? Go in the comments. What is your relationship with money? Is it good? Is it bad? And then go take that test and come back and tell us how you um, resonate with your top three. We cannot hate, wait to hear from you. We thank you for hanging out with us on another episode, giving us your Wednesday evening. We will be back again next Wednesday for another episode, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central. Y'all, don't miss it, and we cannot wait to see you again. Take it easy.